It's the Health in the Real World podcast. It's time to start the show with Chris Jenke as your host. Here to give you everything that you need when it comes to fitness strategies. We keep it simple and easy. It's your roadmap to get healthy. You don't need equipment and you don't need a gym. Just the right strategies to get you fit and trim. The Health in the Real World podcast is sponsored by... Do you suffer or know someone that suffers from gout? If so, please visit www.goutandyou.com to learn more today. Discover which foods to eat and which to avoid. Get back on your feet with Gout and You. Hello and welcome to the Health in the Real World podcast. I'm Chris Jenke, joined today by Spiro Kolaris. Spiro is a leading gout diet expert, author, and blogger at goutandyou.com. He's dedicated his life to inspiring people to obtain a healthy lifestyle and living a gout-free life. Spiro, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me, Chris. Glad to be here. So um, give us a little bit more, uh, more of a background about how you got into this. What got you originally uh, driven to, to specialize in gout? So basically, uh, I'm a blogger. I blog about gout uh, for the past 10 years uh, uh, from a patient, uh, patient point of view. I've got diagnosed with gout at the age of 26. Uh, I remember going to a bar one night uh, and drinking a lot of Jack Daniels and Cokes with a bunch of friends and then going to bed around 2, 3 in the morning and waking up in the middle of the night with a painful gout attack on my big toe. Uh, it was so excruciating. I couldn't even put a sheet, a bed sheet on it. That's how painful wow. it was. So I thought I had dislocated or broken a bone. So I, I hopped wow. off uh, next morning to my doctor's office, uh, told them uh, it was very painful to check it out and quickly diagnosed me with having gout. Uh, wow. And I, I asked him what that was and explained to me that uh, my body produces too much uric acid and uh, basically crystallizes in the joints and that creates an inflammatory response, which causes a painful gout attack. Uh, I didn't believe him, so I had to do blood tests, I remember. Uh, and then surely enough, my uric acid levels were pretty high. Um, so after that, uh, I remember three weeks of barely walking, uh, walking in crutches. I had uh, uh, developed gout in the knee as well so uh, it was a toe and the big toe and the knee uh and that demoralized me a bit and basically i started mm -hmm. researching on the web about more information on gout and i couldn't find anything uh that was outside of medical and uh, studies right medical studies so i decided to dive deep in and start developing this blog and this community for gout sufferers to basically learn more about the disease uh and so on so what causes gout uh, in the first place? I know several people who have it. And yeah, the same thing as you, they, they tell me it's just incredibly painful. What causes it in the first place? Uh, it's basically the kidneys are responsible for excreting uric acid. Everybody has uric acid in their body. So uh, the kidneys uh, basically fail to excrete it via the urine so it stays in the body and if too much uric acid stays in the body it basically crystallizes in the joints usually the big toe followed by the knee the ankle elbows uh, hand gout so and then you'll get an inflammatory response you'll get a full-blown gout attack and then uh, you have to treat it uh, so usually it's a kidney uh, function uh, failure basically uh, it all yeah. starts there and get gout. so is this gout is not... yeah, go ahead Oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to say, well, is this something that like you have like a predisposition to it and then certain lifestyle factors just exacerbate it? It depends. Uh, uh, I would say a lot of people, it's basically genetic. In my case, my doctor uh, stated that because it's very rare for somebody my age to get gout. Usually you see gout develop in people 50, 60 and over. Right. Um, uh, so in my case, I had I have thalassemia minor that I was born with uh, since I, I'm Greek, and basically that thalassemia minor, which is a blood disorder, maybe have caused the kidney issue, uh, 
uh, developing the gout. In my case, that's uh, my case is genetic, but I would say for a lot of cases, and uh, maybe the majority of cases, it's basically dietary and lifestyle. Uh, a lot of people nowadays in, in the West, we eat a lot of meat, we eat too much protein, too much processed meats, too much mm-hmm. processed, processed foods, too much alcohol, which uh, basically uh, causes uh, people to develop gout uh, later in life and obesity as well, right? So those are the main factors, risk factors of gout, of developing gout. Nice. Right. So you, you have a, you have a, a kind of a diet and cookbook. What are some highlights from that cookbook? You know, you, you mentioned meat, you mentioned alcohol, some of the more heavy toxic things and can put an overload on the kidneys. What are some things that can do the opposite that can help us so, to eliminate uric acid? The ideal gout diet that I, I, I promote and advocate about is um, basically for gout sufferers to start eating at least 80% of their daily calories as complex carbohydrates. So think of as uh, fresh vegetables, legumes, some fruit, uh, 100% whole grain breads, 100% whole grain pastas and rices, uh, and beans, more plant-based proteins, because uh, those foods are, are easier for the kidneys to break down and process compared to meat or alcohol, which takes much longer uh, to break down uh, and strains the kidneys. And that's what causes excess uric acid in the body. So uh, basically eat at least 80% complex carbs. I would say 10% you could have protein of your daily calories. So I would recommend one of your three meals have some protein. So you could have some chicken breasts, uh, some turkey, some lean beef, some, uh, some fish. Uh, make sure it's not more than four to six ounces, usually the size of your hand, I recommend to gout sufferers. Uh, and then the final 10% of daily calories, I recommend fat intake. So you could have a little bit of milk, cheese, eggs, butter, yogurt, and so on. Uh, the danger, the dangerous part for gout sufferers is animal-based food. So you got to limit your animal-based food intake. And that's mostly in fat and protein, right? Yeah. So basically, you got to limit that and go more with a vegetarian diet, uh, soon as you can and that will help you uh, long term to control the disease yeah so uh it doesn't necessarily need to be like veganism like what about eggs and milk products do those still contribute to gout or is that that's better than meat i would imagine if you have too much yeah so like meat if you have too much eggs or too much uh uh, milk milk based products the kidneys take longer to process that because it's animal based so uh, I would recommend more plant-based food for gout sufferers. That's what yeah. studies have shown to really help gout sufferers. Yeah, yeah, fruits and vegetables and yeah. things like that. What? So what's the what's the role of medicine? Uh, what medications and natural remedies? Well, let's let's stick with medications. Are there any medications out there that can alleviate gout symptoms long term, or is this? in your mind, is it more beneficial to change the lifestyle and and go more of a natural route? Well, it depends. Uh, it's a case-by-case basis, but I would recommend, uh, there are two main drugs for gout. Colchicin is the drug of choice when you have a gout attack. Uh, you basically take that, uh, and then within a couple of days, you start feeling better, the inflammation uh, goes away. Uh, allopurinol is the drug of choice for long-term control of uric acid levels. So a lot of people that go on allopurinol will basically take it for life. Uh, But I do have readers that write in and can uh, basically uh, cure their gout with diet. Uh, But it doesn't mean in the future you may not get another gout attack. So you have to be careful with uh, uh, going that natural way because gout for the most part usually is a lifetime disease, unfortunately. Uh, and mm. it's very hard to reverse. Um, so basically, I'd recommend you work with your doctor if you want to try the natural uh, way uh, of following an ideal gout diet that I advocate. But regardless, even if you're allopurinol like I am, uh, and I've decreased my dosage from 300 milligrams to close to 100, uh, is through my diet I did that. So I recommend even if you're on allopurinol, uh, you have to change your lifestyle because if you don't, if you don't start eating better, your your allopurinol dosage will just increase over time. Mm-hmm. Your doctor will increase it because uh, you continue to eat the same bad way that before and you haven't changed your diet and lifestyle. So uh, I always recommend that uh, gout sufferers follow uh, basically my gout diet plan. 
Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so moving on to like the other half of the coin, um, exercise is, yeah. have, have they uh, correlated exercise, like more exercise with decreased gout symptoms yes. or? Yes, so I recommend my readers exercise uh, and I'm gonna point them to your website and your work because uh, you teach a lot of uh, exercise uh, movements um, for people that suffer through pain. Uh, or uh, can help them uh, with their joints because if they have continuous uh, gouty symptoms. So uh, exercise is very important to strengthen the joints, make them strong over time because gout deteriorates them. So it's imperative Got that it. you go exercise, uh, walking, swimming, and you have to exercise mostly. Uh, it depends on the gout sufferer. If you have advanced gout, you want to go with low impact exercises like swimming, uh, walking, cycling, uh, and if you don't have advanced gout like I do, you could hit the gym and lift weights and strengthen, strengthen those joints and, uh, and muscles and so on. And that's going to help you over the long term for sure. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So I, that's great. We have some very practical, you know, diet exercise tips yeah. and uh, any, any final words about, you know, different other resources, obviously your book, your blog, uh, Talk about those a little bit and, and what you're bringing to people. So my blog is goutinyou.com. Uh, uh, there's a lot of articles uh, for gout sufferers, mostly on foods and diet information. So we, we, we go food by food and we break it down and what's good, what's, what's good to eat and what's, what's to be avoided in a gout diet uh, and so on. Uh, the ebook goes into more detail uh, on the, the ideal gout diet that I advocate on about uh, which is the, uh, the uh, Gout and You, the ultimate gout diet and cookbook. Uh, and from there, you're not going to change overnight, right? You're going to take it day by day, uh, slowly try to incorporate my advice on a daily basis and start changing your life and your diet. Uh, and you're going to see that uh, over time, you're going to, you're going to, you're not going to miss the beer. You're not going to miss the steaks, the burgers as much. Uh, your palate will change uh, for the better. And, and I also sell a line of dietary supplements to help supplement our gout diet as well. So basically that's what I do. We have a vast community of over 50,000 members. Uh, wow. And there's a lot of comments and uh, a lot of information. So if you suffer from gout or you know somebody that suffers from gout, make sure to check out goutinu.com. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna be referring a few people over to that website. I appreciate you uh, sharing this information with us. This is, uh, you know, a lot of people suffer from it. Like you said, you have 50,000 people in your group. I know there's a lot of other people out there who uh, are in a lot of pain, especially during those big flare ups. So again, we're with uh, Spiro Kolaris. Thank you, Spiro, so much for joining us today on Health Thank in the Real World. Thank you for having me. Thanks for to learn more.